G'day everyone, Matt Elder Family Bricks here, and today we're going to have an overview of our LEGO Sonic the Hedgehog Green Hill Zone course that we made. We will break it down into its modular components and go over some of the design details so you have an understanding of how it all comes together. Free instructions are available at mattelder.com forward slash sonic and possibly third party sites like rebrickable.com. The idea being that we have given enough resources to build your own Sonic the Hedgehog courses. If you do, we'd love to see them via email matt at mattelder.com or Instagram at mattelder underscore UK. This video is brought to you by McCatsum Holiday Homes in Margate and Broadstairs. Great for a week's holiday or a weekend escape, being just over an hour east of London, UK. Treat yourself to amazing sunsets, a Lego wall, or great food. Visit www.macatsim.com and mention this YouTube video and we'll look after you. So just going through a quick run through of what we've got here. We've got a little Sonic Dash, which can be either motorized or do it with a hand crank. A little palm tree, ramp up, a uh, spring here, which actually works both ways. And then a couple of buzzards with the tail that goes down like the uh, game. This one here is another type of spring, but this one is more manually controlled. There's a little lever in the back. Some TVs here, a bridge. Goes along, a couple of loop -the loops there. You know, some spikes, a smaller bridge. Coming down to the corkscrew. And then we get to this corner piece here, 90 degrees. The checkpoint there before going into a Sonic 1 boss battle with the ball and chain type setup and a little capsule on the end, which can pop open, along with a spinning sign with a Sonic on the other side. So while this may seem all really complicated, it actually breaks down into little modular sections, which I'll show you now. And here you can see now how it's broken down into all of its little individual modular pieces. So it makes it much easier to design and build just build it in little tiny sections, have a general idea of how you want to do your course, and then put all the little bits and pieces together. So with all these sort of elements here now, I can also go around and mix and match them, so I could recreate different courses and things. So on these ones up here, they are individual pieces, but then I've just built up the different levels there, so you get different heights. And then the corkscrew here is probably one of the only ones which then has a large sort of footprint just because to hold the actual loop in place there you just got some of these Technic beams in the back otherwise if you didn't have those the whole thing would just keep on splitting apart the whole thing I've designed and built off a 4x8 sort of grid system with this being one of the most basic and common sort of building element so you can sort of see the 4x8 layout there and in designing and building one of these little elements, I tried to do a couple of things. One is to keep it relatively lightweight so that in terms of cost and getting all the bits and pieces, it's relatively cheap and inexpensive. But also too, the way that it breaks down into its individual design is relatively straightforward. So here is the same thing, just missing some of the middle bits in them. And then each one of the individual rows going that way is their own individual elements. So you can take them off and then basically just building lots of these little elements here and then putting them on with always, in this case, your lime green one leading here, which will then mean that at the end you get your dark green and that just helps keep it standard across all your pieces. So, you know, lime green, dark green. And then you may have noticed in the back here, there's like a little bit of a whole area there, which enables you to then put any of these things in the back and gives you total flexibility to add to it and expand. One of the basic elements of any Sonic game is going to be the rings, so I've designed a really straightforward element here, so if you go past, the character can then, you know, knock them over as if they're collecting, and it's actually really straightforward. It's just a Technic brick with two holes, and then one of these hinge-type pieces. Put four of those together, and you get that effect that you're after. Then if you're just taking one of these, you can just pop in a couple of 2x4s there, place that base on top, so then you can come along, join that on there, and you've got a ring set up. So you're starting with lots of little basic building blocks and then just adding to them, which enables you to be completely configurable. Because each of these elements are on their own single straight row, it then gives you the ability to relatively easily 
go through and put them in a step formation. And the way that you can achieve this is on the back, you're just using a combination of plates and bricks to step them up because usually designed it so that you're having at least one point which is flat across there. So, you know, to get this step here, that's all we've really done. A couple of two by fours there, and then you can just go through and then put in some one by fours as shown by that red piece going through there. So when you set them next to each other, you get a little bit of a step there. And then depending upon the layout and the way that you want it to go up and down, you can then also use like two by four plates and the same sort of idea, again, another red one in there. Now in this case too, I've also gone through and just put in a couple of these one by eight Technic brick pieces. Same sort of idea as before. If you want to have expanding on the modularity of it, you can just have another one by eight Technic brick there with your two by eight on top. And then that can just slide in there. And then that gives you a quite high platform to build off whatever other elements you want to add in without having to be very expensive on bricks and things to get all the way up there. So that's just another way of doing it. Then the other main element which I've designed out is then an eight by eight, which is shown here. So again, the four by eight on the front is exactly the same as your previous one. And then you have a four deep on the back, which you can then just build up. Same sort of idea again, you're still doing this checkerboard pattern of the brown and the orange. In here I can use any sort of you know, pieces that I want just to keep the economics of it sensible. And the same sort of thing, when we're going up to here, you're starting off with a flat base to work from and then you can just add in bricks and plates to get the step and the angle that you're after right there. But again, all this step and angle is devised off the same idea of what you had there. Then taking a slight variation off this, in this case here, you've got this second lot of 4 by 8 going up, but if you didn't have it and you had it at the same level, that's how you can achieve one of these 8 by 8s here. Same sort of thing again, the first four by eight, done as you always do it. And then the back here, rather than continuing to build up like we did here, we just kept it flat, going straight across there. And then in this case, just with the way the TV design is, you just take out whatever those one by one tiles are in that place there, and you can put in whether it's your TVs or your spikes or whatever sort of works for you. And then just another slight variation on that. Again, the same sort of thing, four by eight, four by eight here. And then it's coming down so low that it's coming onto itself. So then it looks like it almost has like a step feature or a split. And then on this side here, which joins up to it, it's slightly raised there. And all you're then doing is just putting in this case a one by three in there just to raise it up. So it gives you a huge degree of flexibility relatively easily. And then because of the way that these front edges have this little bit of noise and greebling on it, here we have a base four by eight with some rings sitting on the back. And then this one here is an eight by eight and then you can just pop them in so they can join up nicely in that fashion or you can add them slightly offset and because of the noise that you're getting from this design in the front here it doesn't stand out as being completely different sizes and for other elements like this loop to loop same sort of idea just starting off with one of these 8 by 8s with the second part going up as what we got here and then rather than having all your green foliage decoration grass on the front literally just placed on top of it the 8x8 base to the loop the loop so then all of a sudden you can have that at a height however you want to without major modifications to what's going on then bridges can follow in much the same sort of logic this is just the base one so again you've got your lime on this your green on there as the most basic part then if you wanted to go across wider spans like what we did here you're still having these two little parts here and then you just increase the number of joins in between for something like the boss battle which requires a larger footprint you're still working off the same sort of basis to begin with again you've just got your 8 by 8 as you can sort of see there it's still split into the two 4 by 4s there you join a whole bunch of those together in this instance to achieve the floating elements there it's basically as what you'd have normally it just doesn't have a base in there so taking it off and then when i've removed off a couple of these tiles here so then you can have a two by eight plate in here where you have the technic beam passing the way through and that's kind of the reason why i don't have this base apart from the fact it will make it look weird it then means it's easier to pass through the 32 technic axle there and just due to the weight of itself and trying to keep it upright, you just need some of these cross braces, which is just these clear Technic pieces here. 
again mostly the same as before it's sort of like an 8x8 but to get these Technic pieces to fit in properly it's actually on an 8x16 base because you got either side there's probably other ways of doing that but that's relatively quick straightforward and relatively simple to do by using this brick facade type system where you got the brick facade on the front you can then have that going up as high as you want or whatever you need and then depending upon where you place the element in this case I know this is going in the middle so I'm not too fussed about these faces here you won't see them so therefore I can use whatever bricks that I need and in this case for a bit of extra support I can then also put a technical brick in there which then can go through and connect into there gives it a little bit of extra strength and then just holding it together but then in other instances where you are going to be seeing those elements you can then build them in and then however you want to treat it on the back if you're not seeing it so while it can look like a bit of a mess when you've got it all in the modular pieces like that it gives you a fair degree of flexibility for whatever you want to do however you want to configure it or if you get bored and then want to change it at a later date it's relatively straightforward to go through and do For mine, because you're looking at this from one side and you're not really seeing the back side, mainly only putting this detail in the front here. But you can see over here, I do have examples of it going onto the back. And again, that's relatively straightforward. All I've really done there is taken four by eight setup. That's all that is, is two of those. But normally what you'd have is you'd have the lime green start and the green on the end there. Because these are individual pieces, I've just taken them off and flipped them around so, you know, it starts with the actual dark green there and then goes around. So then when you spin it all the way around and join them up, it'll look like it's continuous. And by joining them up, not doing anything special, just got the usual sort of pins going into there. And then the one that sits next to, it's got a 1x6 Technic brick, which can then just join them all together. So that when it goes back on there, you can get that effect relatively cheap, just doing more or less what you are, just changing one little alternate there and giving you another way you can do your layouts. A couple of examples of the offsets, like in here, just come forward just a little bit. Again, unless you're really looking for it, it's not really going to make too much of a difference. And then also too, just because we've got the capsule so deep to have the mechanical module in the back there, it can also have a bit of the offset there. But it doesn't have to if you really wanted to you could have this whole thing so it's sitting back well so that the front there is flush but just given that broken line nature of the up and the down and the way that those things sit in and out it then means that it's not as obvious that the whole thing is not in one line and same sort of thing over here just on that sort of four by eight module there just got that a little bit forward Hopefully that has given you a good primer and with free instructions at mattelder.com forward slash sonic, you can build your own Sonic the Hedgehog courses. Individual modular components may have their own videos as well, so be sure to be on the lookout for those. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel. A share also never goes astray. If you do come up with anything, we'd love to see it and you can tag us at mattelder underscore UK on Instagram or email matt at mattelder.com. Thanks to London Affols and John for helping out with some technical suggestions whenever I ran into a wall or tried to find more elegant solutions. The overall design is a combination of our own and taking inspiration from other mocks we saw on the internet. An interesting one to check out is this Lego Ideas one from almost five years ago by Mitsami, sorry if I butchered the pronunciation on that, and there should be a link around the video. For a bit of fun, you can check out our LEGO Sonic the Hedgehog short here, based upon this course. Otherwise, this is a time-lapse video of a Sonic the Hedgehog mural I did that may be of interest. Alternatively, do you may enjoy these videos. That's it from us here at Family Bricks. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time, when we talk about all things LEGO and lifestyle.